The 2023 Triumph Street Triple RS is a two-wheeled maestro that's here to set the streets on fire with its untamed spirit and unapologetic attitude. It's a thrilling bike to ride, packed with power, agility, and that big dose of unmistakable Triumph charm. And if you haven't already guessed, we both really, really like this bike. In fact, it could be the best bike I've ridden this year. It's a bike with pulsating power, a modern and you could say aggressive design. With enough attitude to make even Beyonce break out in a cold sweat. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up, leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining us and be sure to check out some of our older rider stories and reviews. Triple cylinder engines in general are the charismatic maverick of the motorcycling world, offering a unique blend of power and torque that sets it apart from other engine designs. And in the 2023 Triumph Street Triple RS, we have one of the best, if not the best, triple on the market. It is a liquid-cooled 12-valve double overhead cam inline three-cylinder engine that puts out 128 brake horsepower at 12,000 RPM with peak torque of a very respectable 80 newton meters at 9,500 RPM. It has a wet multi-plate slipper clutch and a six-speed gearbox with Triumph's wonderful up and down quick shifter. The triple engine sounds fabulous through the funky looking stainless steel 3 into one header system and out through a low single-sided stainless steel silencer. There are 41mm Showa big piston forks that are fully adjustable for compression and rebound damping, as well as preload and they have 115mm of travel. On the rear, there's an Olin's STX40 piggyback reservoir monoshock, adjustable for compression and rebound damping, as well as preload adjustment and 131mm of travel. The wheels are 17 inch, five spoke cast alloys with 120 slash 70 on the front and a 180 slash 55 on the rear. It has a five inch full color TFT with five rider modes being rain, road, sport, track and rider. But I'll be honest, I mostly just left it in road. Yeah, I did flick through the modes and I put it in sport and I pretty much just left it there. Other electronics include full LED lighting, optimized cornering ABS, switchable optimized cornering traction control, front wheel lift control, which is probably a good thing because that front wheel feels like it wants to get in the air quicker than a beach tent in a cyclone. The Triumph Street Triple RS has a 15 litre fuel tank, weighs 188 kilos wet, has a wheelbase of 1,399 millimetres and a relatively tall seat height of 836 millimetres. However, with the tapered seat, I could easily flat foot it. Even Shorty here could flat foot too. <laughs> oh, harsh. The price of the Street Triple RS is 20,590 for silver ice, which I think actually looks a little bit bland. But the much more interesting Carnival Red and Cosmic Yellow are $20,890. Service intervals are every 10,000 Ks or every 12 months, so pretty standard. There is also a cheaper R model that is more road focused with 118 brake horsepower for $18,090 and a Motor 2 version with clip-ons and Olin forks for $25,290. So I must admit, this is a bike that I did have some concerns about based on my experience with the Speed Triple RS. Now that's a very good bike, but I found it to be really snatchy and quite hard to ride in traffic. But with no more than 30 seconds on the Street Triple RS, those concerns were completely gone. This bike is very, very easy to ride in traffic and it's an absolute scream once you get the chance to open it up. The power delivery from the engine is a thing of beauty, offering a broad spread of torque throughout the rev range, providing effortless acceleration, exhilarating overtakes, and above all, a level of smoothness that I was really not expecting. The first thing I noticed when I jumped on it was how incredibly light it was. The compact size and lighter weight enhanced the bike's agility, making it a nimble and responsive companion on both the twisty roads and when commuting in Sydney's congested city traffic. The next thing for me is the brakes. They're excellent as you'd expect from premium units like the Brembo style Emas. They were progressive and pulled the bike up really quickly without being too harsh. 
It's got great suspension and excellent handling. It really made me feel like a better rider than I probably am. Yeah, you're not alone there. Um, the handling is absolutely wonderful and I definitely felt like a more accomplished rider than I probably am. Yeah, and that is down to the wonderful electronics on the bike. I couldn't really notice when things like cornering ABS or traction control were kicking in. So I suppose that's probably a good thing. I think it is. It has one of the best quick shifters I've ever used, very nearly on par with a bike that I've just handed back to BMW, the brand new S1000 RR. The gearbox and quick shifter are smooth, both up and down. And it's a fun bike just to bang through the gears when you take off from a set of lights. Now, this was the first time that I had ridden a bike with a quick shifter. So I've got to admit, I was a little bit cautious with it. But one thing I did notice was how light the slip assist clutch was. No fatigue in the hand at all, even in the city traffic. The TFT is typical Triumph and quite good overall, with the exception that some of the text was quite difficult to read because it was so small. But it was mostly things like the clock and the fuel gauge. But I did flick through the menu to find a design that worked for me, so overall another thumbs up for the TFT. Design wise, it just works with the look of the rest of the bike, which brings us to the twin headlights. I like them and they're not usually the sort of thing that I'd go for, but it works. Tegan, how about you? Yeah, so the design for me, I didn't love it. I didn't dislike it either. And the headlight, I'm not a huge fan. I don't like the way that the headlight is separated from the rest of the bike. And it just has a little bit of a bug eye look that I wasn't a huge fan of. Pretty standard for Triumph Street Triple Zoe having that bug eye look. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it was surprisingly comfortable. Um, you've got great leverage with those wide handlebars. It sounds great and goes like a bat out of hell. And in a world where exhilaration is the ultimate currency, the 2023 Triumph Street Triple RS emerges as a very worthy champion of modern motorcycling. Yeah, I agree. It's much more comfortable than it looks like it would be. I think you could do some pretty long rides and still be relatively comfortable when you arrive at your destination. Definitely. So looks, subjective I know, and even though I can appreciate the bike is well designed visually, I have to say it doesn't quite do it for me. It looks just a bit too modern and aggressive, although looks can be deceiving because this isn't necessarily an aggressive bike to ride. Yeah, on that, I generally like the looks of the modern bikes, but I'd say that this was okay. It has sleek lines, a muscular stance, and an attention to detail that demands attention. Now I'm being really picky here, but the side stand felt a little bit flimsy, although it worked just fine. But my main gripe with the bike is the TFT and the small text that it has. And if I'm being really picky, I probably wouldn't use all of those rider modes. It's fine to have them, but I'd probably only use rain and road and maybe occasionally a sports mode. So maybe the R model would be a better option for me. Although I do really like the red. Tell us what you think. What are your thoughts on the 2023 Street Triple RS? So as much as I'm not a massive fan of the looks of this bike, I could easily get over that and probably get used to it. With the way the power is generated, the superb handling and the wonderful sound from that triple, for me, it's another 10 from Triumph. I'm yet to ride a better bike this year and I would love to have one in the garage. But I'd also love to see Triumph make a retro or modern classic with that engine and electronics. They couldn't call it a Trident because that name's already taken with their 660 triple. So I guess it has to be a relaunch of the Hurricane name. Who's with me? Who would like to see a new Triumph Hurricane with that engine from the Street Triple? And if we do see a new Triumph Hurricane, remember, you heard it here first. Tegan, where does it sit for you? I liked pretty much everything about that bike with the exception of the looks, which were okay. I felt comfortable on it from the very start. I loved the engine, the power delivery, and the sound. And I really felt confident on it from the first time that I sat down. So for me, it's a nine. I would happily have one in my garage, although slightly out of my price range, but Triumph, if you wanna give it to me, give me a call. Yes, it very well could be the Biker Talk Bike of the Year. Bike of the Year? I didn't know we were doing that. We should start that. Okay. Everyone will be on it, I guarantee. <laughs> With a modern aggressive design and power delivery that would make Thor jealous, the Triumph Street Triple RS is a bike that's here to shake up the tarmac and ignite your inner hooligan. Tegan, you had it first. What sort of riding did you do? 
Well, unfortunately, I only had it for about a week before I went overseas on holidays. So let's talk about that for a second. Three weeks in Italy and you didn't jump on a Ducati, a Guzzi or a Vespa. What's going on there? I'm sorry, okay? I was busy eating my way through Italy. <laughs> So my first few days with it were commuting, which was amazing. It has great control with those wide bars and the clutch was very light, so it was a very easy bike to commute on. But on the weekend, I did head off for a ride through the Royal National Park with my friend Andy on his Ducati Panigale. We hadn't ridden together for a little while and he did comment on how comfortable and confident that I looked on the street triple, particularly on some of the tighter bends in the park. It felt great riding down there and I really couldn't wait to get back on it after a quick stop for brunch at the Imperial at Clifton. On the way back, it felt like the bike was responding to my every command with unparalleled finesse. So, not sure if it was that my riding skills have improved or that the bike just makes you look a lot better. And for me, it was mostly a few commutes and a blast through the Royal National Park and a bit of a night ride around Sydney. And I can't see why anyone would want more than this bike has to offer. For me, it's a better bike than the Speed Triple in every way. It's great in traffic. It's heaps of fun in the twisties. And I reckon if you had a chance to take it on track, you'd be grinning from ear to ear. It has a blend of cutting edge technology, draw dropping performance, and a design that even though it's not my cup of tea, turns heads at every corner. And I think I can safely say that the 2023 Street Triple RS has rewritten the rules of the game. Let us know your thoughts on the 2023 Street Triple RS. Is it a better bike than the Speed Triple or are you like me and would love to see the same bike in a retro package? Let's hope Triumph for listening. If you like this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, we're still having our sale running at bikertalk.com.au and use the code BIKER10 for an additional 10% off at checkout. That's it for today. We'll be back next week with my review of the epic BMW S1000 RR that you didn't get to ride because you're in Italy. Till next time, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.